We talked about how music conveys a message of the text. It is the, the carriage of that message. And so if you're singing about something jubilant, the music should sound jubilant. And you'll have some of that as we go through. So we begin first movement. Jesu. It's so just very gentle. It's a, it's a lullaby.
that leads us to qui tollis peccata mundi, who takes away the sin of the world. And this, I wanted to have a darker kind of minor quality, thinking about our sinfulness, but not too, not too brooding and dark because Jesus takes those sins away. So we come out of the interlude. Miserere, mercy. We cadence on a C major chord, but the the mezzo soloist has an unresolved floating D, which is the second, that just stays and just goes to ether as we sing one final time, Jesu Christe. Pitts strings, which are a little hard to hear on the recording, bring us in. follow me on Twitter, you've probably seen the occasional hashtag Miss Busman, uh, who's my cat. She makes her appearance and has her own sort of little fan following. <laughs> I think people like her more than me, and that's okay. I like her more than me. But um, when she jumps up onto my lap or onto her perch, she does this little little sound, as many cats probably do. So you'll hear the trumpet. It's measure 27. The trumpet has the Miss Busman beat. The quaniam, which was foreshadowed in movement one, the nine, eight, three, four, that was the first part of this movement that I wrote. It's just a part. Music needs to be expressive and we, we don't want to be too commercial and we don't want to just give people ear candy, but we want to be able to, um, to connect with the listener and to connect with the performer. And when people come away from a, a choral work, especially a choral work that has a text, you want it to be something that stays with them. I've heard so many beautiful soundscapey things or, or very cerebral kind of um, tone poems and stuff, and there I can appreciate them as a theory geek, and there's no shade intended to those composers. But sometimes it's more about the academic experience than enveloping you in the sound, and that's what I'm so in love with is the latter. What I started calling my sort of Copeland theme. This I don't know. This feels somewhere in the subconscious. It's I think Aaron Copeland is influenced of all of this. Uh, maybe with apologies to Copeland. I'll, I'll play a little of this, this groove. Um.
bit of spasmodic jubilation. It's just, it's just frenetic almost and just ecstasy. Thank you.